Rutherford's atomic model was quite commendable when it came to explaining the structure of atoms. However, it was not very appropriate theoretically. And why are we saying so? We know that any charged object which revolves in a circular motion gains acceleration gradually. Similarly, if the electron is moving fast in a circular path, then it will also gain acceleration. And on gaining acceleration, it's bound to liberate energy in some form. Now if it continuously keeps radiating energy, then ultimately all the energy of the electron will get over and it will fall into the nucleus. This would result in high instability of the atom. But wait a second, all these things do not happen in an atom. And how do we know this? Because in nature, all the atoms are stable. That means the hypothesis put forth by Rutherford was also incorrect? Not really. The hypothesis just needed slight modifications. These were made by the next legendary scientist in our list called Niels Bohr. He made a few additional explanations to describe the atomic structure. The postulates put forward by Niels Bohr were as follows. Firstly, only certain special orbits called discrete orbits of electrons are allowed inside the atom. Secondly, while revolving in these discrete orbits, the electrons do not radiate energy. Now these points definitely tell us why an atom is so stable. But what exactly are these paths or orbits in which the electrons revolve around the nucleus? Let's understand with an example. Do you know how our solar system is? Yes, it appears somewhat like this. Now here, the sun is stationary at the centre while the planets revolve around it. But have you noticed that the planets always revolve in fixed paths? We never find any planet jumping to a different path all of a sudden, right? They always encircle the sun in defined paths. In a similar way, we have the atomic structure. The nucleus acts like the sun located at the centre. And the electrons are like planets which revolve in fixed defined orbitals. These electron orbitals are referred to as shells or energy levels. Now the name energy levels gets us to an important concept. Niels Bohr suggested that the electrons revolving in these orbitals do not radiate energy. Now this is justified when we use the term energy levels because it indicates that each shell has got a defined energy level. That means when the electrons revolve in these shells, they do not liberate any form of energy. And how do we name these shells to indicate their position? It's simple. Beginning from the one near the nucleus, we name them as the K shell, L shell, M shell, N shell and so on. Yes, K, L, M, N and so on. And what if we want to number them? In that case, we use the letter N in lower case and write them as N equals 1, N equals 2, N equals 3 and so on beginning from the one next to the nucleus. So we can name them alphabetically or we can even number them. With all these theories and points known, do we now know the structure of a typical atom completely? The nucleus contains positive protons and the electrons revolving around in fixed orbitals. Is that how an atom is structured? Not really. We still have one more subatomic particle left. And what and where could it be? Let's find that out. It was around the year 1932 when a famous English physicist, Sir James Chadwick, found the third subatomic particle. He found that the particle had a mass almost equivalent to that of the proton. And what about its charge? Astonishingly, it had no charge. Yes. The particle was neutral. The particle was later named as neutron, denoted by the letter N. Thus, now we have the complete design of an atom. In the center lies the nucleus having positively charged protons and neutral neutrons, while the negatively charged electrons revolve in fixed orbitals around the nucleus. But how exactly are the electrons distributed in the respective orbitals? Is there a way to find out the maximum number of electrons that one orbital can contain? Or is it that the electrons are randomly scattered in the orbitals? Let's find out the answers to these questions in our upcoming video.